Okay. So, so far we've talked about the anatomy of the male and the anatomy and physiology of the female reproductive system. Now we're going to talk about fertilization. So, uh, fertilization can only occur in the first three to five days after ovulation when the egg is in the fallopian tube. If we skip ahead in our slot, if we uh, go back to our, um, just a minute here, let me go to the female reproductive system drawing. So, the remember that the eggs are produced in the ovary here, and then when they mature at ovulation, they're spit out and they're in the fallopian tube. Let me do a different color. And in the fallopian tube, the egg has to travel along. And the key to understanding fertilization is to understand that the egg must be fertilized in that time. You can't fertilize an egg that's still in the ovary. And you can't fertilize an egg once it's in the uterus. So it has to be fertilized in the fallopian tube. And it's in the fallopian tube for a time of three to five days after ovulation. Not starting three days after ovulation, but starting with ovulation three days or up to five days it takes the egg to travel down the fallopian tube it's an important thing to understand uh, at least 20 million sperm must be present for the egg to be fertilized so uh, this seems like a really high number and i'll explain this in a minute so the egg is in the fallopian tube there have to be about 20 million sperm present in order to actually fertilize the egg. Now, there's some questions about why this is and some discussion about why this is. But generally, uh, there's an enzyme in the head of the sperm that, quote, opens up the egg for sperm. So that enzyme is called hyaluronidase. Okay, hyaluronidase is an enzyme. So you have your little sperm. And there's an enzyme in the head of the sperm that it secretes when it gets into the fallopian tube, when it gets into the female body, actually, in the vagina or in the uterus. So the sperm are swimming. The sperm are swimming. The sperm are swimming uh, up into the, through the uterus. They're ejected into the vagina. Uh, they travel up into the uterus. And some sperm go the wrong way. They'll die. Some sperm never make it, they'll die. Some sperm make it all the way into the uh, fallopian tube, and along the way they're producing, they're all producing this enzyme that uh, sort of, quote, opens up the egg for sperm. And the cool thing about hyaluronidase is it's the same chemical that's in certain flowers that gives them their smell. And if you, I'll give you a second just to think about the flower that it could be, and when I tell you that it's roses, you may not be surprised. So that's a big psychology thing to talk about probably is, that's really interesting. Girls really like roses. We give roses on Valentine's Day and other love days. Huh, interesting. So anyway, if you're wondering uh, why, so anyway, the egg only allows one sperm in and then closes up. In other words, only one sperm can fertilize an egg at any time. As soon as that sperm penetrates the egg, so the egg, I'll draw it like this with a little corona around it. Once that first sperm penetrates into the egg, the egg shuts down. There's a little electrical signal that goes around the egg and shuts it down to all other sperm. So you may be wondering, why 20 million? Well, you need 20 million sperm worth of this chemical. I mean, sperm are tiny little cells, right? And so they only give off a little tiny bit of chemical. And so the going theory is that you need 20 million sperm worth of that chemical in order to be able to actually fertilize the egg. So uh, if there are 20 million sperm present, well, so what this means, I mean, really, is that a male that only produces 19 million sperm is infertile. It's a lot of pressure on a male, right? He's got to make 19.
So, a couple things about this. If we go back to our slide about, sorry about that, the menstrual cycle. So if we relate this to the menstrual cycle then, uh, a female has her menstrual flow and she ovulates about day 14. Okay, so ovulation day is about day 14 for a female. The egg can be fertilized anywhere from three to five days afterwards. And you see that along the same lines, progesterone levels are rising in the uterus produced by the degenerating, what's left over after the egg ovulates, the corpus luteum. You're like, well, all I have to do then is not have sex from day I ovulate until about five days after. Right, we call that the pop rule. Period, ovulation, period. Except there's a tiny problem with that. Sometimes a girl produces, ovulates two times, or three times, or four times. A girl may produce four eggs at a time. That would be the, if it was two eggs, you'd have the poop rule. You'd have two ovulations. And remember, the ovulations happen right in the middle of the cycle. So you have a 28-day cycle. You know, oh, ovulation happens on day 14. And I had sex on day 13. I'm good. Yeah, but what if you, what if you actually popped an egg out a day early? Or what if you actually pop an egg out a couple days later, another egg? Or you, or you ovulated three eggs and didn't know it at three different times. This is why you have to be very careful of trying to time uh, sexual reproduction, right? You can't really, it, it's very difficult to time. So ovulation day is day 14. Five days later, the egg leaves the fallopian tube. You think you're good, but you actually had another ovulation in there. And so obviously, if you have four ovulations, you could have the poop rule, right? Where you had a period, four ovulations in between, and then another period. And um, so this is why, you know, just going with the three to five day rule doesn't really work. Plus, sperm live up to 48 hours inside of a female. So you have sex on day 12, you ovulate on day 14, and there's still and you're like, I'm good. No, there's still sperm alive in there. Okay, there could be still sperm alive in there. All right. So let's skip to our next slide. So the egg is fertilized. Let's pretend you actually fertilize the egg. As we talked before about entering the menstrual cycle, what happens if the egg is not fertilized? Well, here's what happens if the egg is fertilized. So if the egg is fertilized, remember it's somewhere in the fallopian tube here. Sperm have traveled up, fertilized the egg somewhere after ovulation in the fallopian tube. These letters here correspond with what's happening inside of the egg after fertilization, these letters correspond with where the egg is. One of the first things that, so, so what happens first of all, is you have this, this cell division, right? And you kind of know about this, that, that you have this egg. Notice there's like a shell around it. That's what keeps other sperm, that's what kept other sperm from getting in. And then inside that shell, the embryo starts to divide. And after three or four days, you have this ball of cells. And after five or six days, after, sorry, after three days, you have this ball of cells. After four days, you have this ball of cells, but it's kind of hollowed out. And notice that from this slide to this slide, this little shell around it is gone. So for the first four days after conception, you're actually in this little shell. And let me tell you something really interesting. Scientists have seen the shell, one of the, have seen this shell not break open all the way. And they have seen these cells crawl out. Because what they're going to do is this one here, part E here, is going to embed itself in the wall of the uterus. It's going to burrow in. These cells, they literally dig in to the wall of the uterus. And right here, this is going to be the baby, eventually, 
And this stuff around it is going to be something called the placenta, which we'll talk about in our next uh, note-taking session. So if the egg is fertilized, the zygote releases a chemical called HCG after seven days. So it's embedded in the wall of the uterus. That takes about six to seven days. And it starts releasing this hormone. What the hormone does is it tells the ovary to secrete progesterone and estrogen, progesterone and estrogen. It also prevents the mother's immune system from attacking the embryo. Let me go back to our menstrual cycle slide a second. So, egg is fertilized. These levels continue to rise. Why? Because the the embryo produced a hormone called HCG. The reason to make this rise is so you don't lose the wall of the uterus over here. So this doesn't happen. The wall of the uterus continues to grow to feed the developing baby. Whoops, sorry about that. Now, the other thing about HCG if you've ever heard of an early pregnancy test, this is what the early pregnancy test is testing for. Because the only way you're positive, well, there are false positives, but the, the stick has a chemical on it that detects the presence of HCG. HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, is only present when there's an embryo developing inside of your uterus. That's uh, the first part of our fertilization lecture.